what's the difference between clay and grass court tennis? Andy Murray recently had an epic win at Wimbledon, but he's never won the French Open because it's played on slower clay courts, which isn't his favourite surface. So let's take a look at the science behind the difference between clay and grass. Well, on any surface, when a ball bounces, the bottom of the ball slows down while the top of the ball keeps moving. Um, the bottom of the ball slows down because of the friction with the court surface. And interestingly, on clay courts, they're made of tiny crushed brick particles, which means that there's even more friction because the particles are slightly rough. Plus, the cloth of the ball is a little bit fuzzy, which often picks up extra particles, making the ball heavier and slowing the ball down even more. Whereas on grass courts, when a ball hits the grass, it bends the blades of grass and the ball kind of skids through. So grass is a much quicker surface. So a ball coming in at a speed of about 67 miles an hour would hit a grass court and bounce off at about 45 miles an hour. Whereas on a clay court, it'd be much slower. It'd go down to about 38 miles an hour, which is a difference of about 20%. Also, the angle of the bounce is different. So a ball coming in at 16 degrees on grass will bounce out at 16 degrees, but on clay it'll bounce much higher at about 20 degrees. And that's because clay has what's known as a higher coefficient of restitution. Basically, it's a bit bouncier. So often on clay courts, players have fractions of a second longer in which to get to the ball. And so rallies often last longer. So players adapt their game to the different surfaces. You may have seen on clay courts that players slide into the ball and time their slide perfectly so that by the end they're hitting the shot and then have the traction to push back to recover quicker back into the middle of the court. Whereas on grass, unless it's really wet, you don't tend to see people slipping and sliding over. Another difference with clay and grass is that clay court specialists often have quite extreme grips. So that's to generate more topspin because topspin controls the ball and basically means that a ball will, can go higher over the net and yet still dip back down into the court even if it's hit really hard. Whereas on grass, players tend to hit the ball a bit flatter because although they'll have a lower margin for error, they know that they're probably more likely to hit more winners because grass is a faster surface. There are three types of ball that are used at professional level. Type 1 is used on clay, type 2 on cement or hard courts, and type 3 on grass. Now type 3 balls are about 6.5% wider in diameter, which means they've got a larger surface area. So hence when they're moving through the air, they move at a slower pace because of the extra air resistance. Now the International Tennis Federation intentionally brought these slower balls in because about 10-15 years ago the game on grass had just become a game of aces. People were smacking down serves and it got a bit boring. The other difference that's happened in grass court tennis in recent years is that at Wimbledon back in 2001 the head groundsman changed the mix of grass from a 70-30 mix of two different types to 100% what's known as perennial ryegrass because of the wear and tear the players were having on the court. Perennial rye was actually found to be tougher. But what it did was it made the surface of the court actually firmer. So when a ball bounces, it actually bounced up higher. So both of these factors are part of the reason why we don't see serve volleyers like Pete Sampras dominating the game in the same way. We see players more like Andy Murray winning from the baseline just as well for British tennis. But interestingly, Andy actually went off in his mid-teens to go and train in Spain on the slower clay courts because that gave him a chance to develop his angles, his drop shots, his lobs, and then he transferred those skills back to Wimbledon. So, if you want to be a Wimbledon champion, I'd suggest going and training on clay first. So if you want to hear more about the science of sport, subscribe to Head Squeeze by clicking on the bouncing ball.